this is a video lecture for the course in ABA 116 and before we go into our discussion for the first topic I just would like to give you an overview of this course so in our ABE program we have four specializations we have we have um, specialization about the agricultural machinery mechanization or the subjects about the machine design so it's all in this specialization agricultural machinery and the other one is the agricultural process engineering so subjects like the storage milling um, drying so it's all in this um, specialization okay, the third one is about the soil and water engineering so subjects like engineering subjects like the drainage ir irrigation what else soil conservation I mean soil and water conservation engineering so it's all in this um, specialization okay and the last one is the agricultural structures so in this specialization we have courses um, we have courses like 160 161 162 and 163 so for 160 I think that's the agricultural electrification and controls wherein you, you have studied or s we can say something like the electrical aspects right electrical aspects of the building okay and for 161 um, you have taken that last semester and um, recall that we studied about the the loadings the structural systems um, the reinforced concrete the analysis of beams columns footings so we can say that something like the structural aspects right so for 162 it's another aspect of the building and that's the indoor environment right S specifically for plant and livestock housing um, livestock and poultry right so the indoor environment right so um, it's another aspect uh, it's a major aspect as well because uh, the indoor environment actually affects the performance of the plant or the or the livestock so for example if the temperature is too high inside so what's gonna happen to our to our livestock right or if the uh, co2 concentration is too high what's gonna happen to the plants so that's what we are going to study in this indoor environment right in this 162 now for 163 that's about the waste management systems um, because some of the uh, I mean sometimes of the agricultural structures such as the livestock buildings livestock production buildings the um, some processing buildings uh, they generate a lot of waste and we can't just simply dump the waste into wherever because that's gonna contaminate our our natural resources and of course there are laws involved so so that's why um, in this subject in 163 we uh, we study there the collection systems how do we collect it or what are the systems involved in the collection of the waste and or the treatment of the waste and if we want to utilize it right so we biogas so it's all in this 163 right so in this course we are here so 162 that's the indoor environment so in this 162 or the indoor environment we will study the effects of the in their environmental uh, parameters to the plants uh, I mean to specifically to the plant production systems and animal production systems right so take note of the word indoor so that means that we are only dealing with the inside environment so we're not going to talk about the uh, those livestock production systems that's um, uh, th that's that's outside 
an enclosure or a plant production system that's outside outside the enclosure or let's say in the field so we're not gonna we're not going to talk about those rather our topic is about the indoor so any plant and livestock production system that has an enclosure and the, uh, and the environment inside so that's what we are going to discuss all right so the effects of the inter-environmental factors so such as the temperature the relative humidity uh, the air speed the air um, air quality and also light so what's what's uh, what's going to be the effect of those uh, factors if it's increased or if it is decreased to the um, to the production of the plant and livestock right and we'll also talk about the um, the fundamental principles all right so let's say here effects and that's our topic for today right L I mean l later on we'll, we'll discuss the same details right so effects and we'll also talk about the fundamental principles so such as the heat transfer uh, in order to maintain the um, proper environment inside then uh, it involves uh, it it involves heat flows going into the building or out to the building um, so we will start we'll have a um, topic about heat transfer and uh, but of course applied to agricultural buildings or building envelope right so fundamental principles the heat transfer the psychometrics because air inside has a moisture content so we will study that and also I will talk about some moisture transport because if there if there's a lot of moisture in the air uh, that's inside the building then what's gonna happen to all to some of the structural components right so it, it produces um, um, growth of molds because if it's wet then uh, it can um, it can produce um, the mold growth right and l later on we'll talk about the systems so a lot of ventilation systems like for example the fans so how do we slice up the fans how do we slice up the uh, evaporative cooling pads right so what else and what if we just want a natural ventilation system so without any fans so how do we design the roof how do we de design uh, the opening of the ridge so that's what we are going to study in this 162 all right so i think that's enough for the overview so now let's go to the topic number one all right so uh, first let's talk about the effect of the environmental factors to the animal production systems and later on we'll talk about the plant production systems all right so we have a graph here and before before we discuss that in detail, I just would like to introduce you to the term homeothermy. Right, so homeothermy is the term. Uh, it's about the ability uh, uh, ability to maintain constant temperature. Constant temperature. Uh, course constant body temperature let's write here body temperature so let's say here's our animal our bird poultry for example right and let's say we have this um, environment outside uh, so let's say the air temperature is around 30 degrees C but the body temperature of the bird is let's say 40 degrees C right so that means that uh, there is actually a difference and it maintains this or if you change somehow uh, or if you change a little bit then uh, more or less it's likely within that range right so the external environment is actually changing so sometimes if it, it's um, if it's rainy or if it's cold at night then probably it goes to 27 degrees C or maybe let's say 25 degrees C 
or maybe let's just write 27 and th then sometimes it, if it's hot then it becomes maybe 34 that we see okay so I even though if uh, the external um, temperature it changes the body temperature the deep body temperature actually wants to maintain that uh, that 40 degrees why because livestock and um, poultry they are homeothermic right so in order to maintain that constant body temperature um, of course there must be some mechanisms how they uh, they maintain that so for example um, you can think about the feed conversion so let's say in terms of feed we can we can take a look at the feed conversion and we can also uh, talk about or look at it in the or in terms of metabolic activity right so in terms of feed con conversion let's say here's our poultry right so if the temperature is too low right, so let's say if the temperature is too low then uh, it has to consume feeds so that it can actually um, heat up itself so instead of converting the feeds to, to growth or to, uh, to to weight to increase its weight it's not utilized in that way but rather the feed is being converted to heat right so it's not it's not about growth right so instead of growth that's not going to be the case so supposedly it's growth but because the temperature is too low it has to uh, consume the feed but that feed co feed consumption is just converted to heat right so if the temperature is too high if the temperature is too high then right, so I'm not gonna draw again if the temperature is too high so if the temperature is too high so it's not going to um, it's not going to consume feed so feed is not consumed so therefore it's not gonna all right so feed is not gonna be consumed because it's already hot because that bird feels hot already so if it's not going to consume feed then then how can um, I mean um, it's not gonna add growth to you to to itself right so so in other words right so in other words whether we have a high temperature or low temperature it's not um, it's not going to be efficient or it's not going to be a maximum performance for the bird in terms of feed conversion so again at low temperature uh, the the bird will will consume feed but it's for heat production and at high temperature it will not consume feed so therefore it will affect its uh, its growth performance All right so that's why it's very critical to to be at the optimum range so uh, the optimum okay so in terms of metabolic activity <laughs> so uh, when you say metabolic activity something related to the energy production right so the the movement of the animal so let's say if, if the temperature is low if, if the temperature is uh, is low so some animals probably uh, responds uh, respond in let's say huddling each other so some movement so that it can uh, it can produce heat somehow so there's going to be movements so that movement is related to this metabolic activity uh, somehow related to the energy right so because it consumes energy then of course that's not going to be efficient so it, it, it's going to affect the the performance i mean the growth performance of the of the bird right at a uh, high temperature t high so just like humans uh, at high temperature uh, when we feel hot 
uh, s somehow we want to fan ourselves, right? So if we want to fan ourselves uh, for cooling off, then that fanning activity is um, actually consuming energy as well, right? So um, in either case, whether the temperature is low or whether the uh, the temperature is high, there's it's I mean it's gonna be um, there's gonna be um, consumption of energy, all right? So that's why we really need to be in the optimum range, right? So here in our graph right here, so that's gonna explain why we want to be in that uh, in that range only the optimum range. And uh, by the way, that range is what we call the thermal neutral zone, right? So that's gonna be the term. So right here we have a graph. Uh, right here we have uh, in the x-axis that's the ambient temperature so increasing to the right and along the vertical axis that's the rate of heat production of the animal right so in that rate of heat production we have the latent heat loss we have the sensible heat loss and the uh, total heat production so for the latent heat loss let's just write QL and for sensible heat loss, let's just write QS. And for the total heat production, um, maybe we'll just write Q total. Right. So this QL, this QL is uh, something like heat, heat production associated with uh, with moisture. Right. So um, or energy. Right, so energy associated with moisture production so for example sweating or panting so somehow uh, we are cooling off but in terms of moisture production or related to moisture production and for the sensible heat so energy associated with temperature difference associated with temperature difference right so it's just simply because of the fact that we uh, that the, that the bird has this um, constant temperature constant body temperature and the exterior environment uh, I mean the the outside environment is is or has a different temperature as well so because of that temperature difference then there's going to be heat flow right or heat transfer so that's the qs and for the q total this is just simply q total is just simply the sum of the sensible heat and the latent heat right so again when you say latent heat it's the energy associated with uh, moisture production and for the sensible heat that's the energy associated with the temperature difference right and the total heat production is just simply the sum of the two right so that means that this this magnitude right here if we add that to the sensible heat so you would notice that it's the uh, I it's this point so let's say right here so if we add this to the height of this we get this value right so that's that's it right and right here the the red curve we have the deep body temperature so it's constant right right so now let's talk uh, let's talk about this in detail so in this figure we have three zones so we have the zone of thermoregulatory range so that's the thermal neutral zone so we're in the animal can still withstand um, the the temperature or the variation of the temperature but at some point uh, if it is too hot then there's um, there's going to be an adverse effect to the animals right so beyond this point this threshold there is a zone of hyperthermia and the other way let's say for cold colder environment so that's the zone of hypothermia so so beyond this range, 
if it is too hot then the animal can experience heat stress or if it's too cold then that's uh, experience cold stress and uh, eventually they can they can die of hyperthermia or hypothermia so that's why it's really necessary to be in this range right so within this zone of thermoregulatory range we have the zone of minimal metabolism so that's the horizontal line right here so somehow they don't have that much um, uh, I mean they don't have that much metabolic activities right so uh, bec because that's what we want right but right here there's also another zone right here sub zone uh, that's called the zone of least thermoregulatory effort right so why it's because the latent heat loss is almost flat and the sensible heat loss is also almost flat right so that's the zone of least thermoregulatory effort all right so if we interpret this let's say for the latent heat loss at colder temperature there's not much um, energy loss associated with moisture production right but at higher temperature we have we have uh, I mean much of the heat loss or the energy transport uh, transfer is due to this latent heat loss right so uh, if you if you can think about it something like uh, for humans if they're if they're sweating then it's all um, it's more on the moisture production right but for sensible heat loss if the uh, at colder temperature uh, it has I mean in it has much of this uh, I mean much of the of the energy transfer is due to the temperature difference right and also at higher temperature but it decreases because the latent heat loss is what's increasing right so within this range right here we have the zone of least thermoregulatory effort right so that's it and another graph right here actually this one is um, something like a latest version of this graph because as you can see we still have the sensible heat that's going up and we still have the latent heat that's going down and we have this total heat production right so something like a, s um, a smoother curve and uh, of course there's going to be um, difference as well somehow but this one originally was taken from Mount uh, that's the author Mount 1973 and this one is from and Finstra and the CIGR so that's their graph for this uh, for this thermal neutral zone. Okay, so now let's talk about the effects of the environmental uh, factors. So first one is the what's going to be the effect, and or I think let's let's write first. So the environmental factors that we consider environmental factors that we we will consider are the temperature temperature the RH that's the relative humidity the air velocity and what else um, the air quality air quality and the uh, light so that's what we will consider for the environmental factors right so for the temperature what's the effect of the uh, of the temperature to the <coughs> livestock or the poultry right so let's say here's our animal let's say this time we'll draw a cow so that's our animal and if the uh, air temperature let's say for the air temperature that's the this one and this one is the A so if the air temperature is too high so let's say if the A uh, sorry if the air temperature is greater than than the animal temperature then uh, what's going to happen is of course there's going to be the the flow of heat will be um, from the air 
air temperature because heat flows from higher temperature to higher temperature to lower temperature so if the air temperature is lower than the animal temperature then the flow of heat will be in the opposite direction right so somehow it affects directly the 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 heat loss or the sensible heat right because there is a change in the the temperature and um, of course it will also affect somehow the the moisture production at higher temperature okay so now for the RH or I think that's right here so it affects temperature affects affects directly the heat losses directly the heat losses right so for RH so when you say relative humidity that's uh, something like the because the the outside air it has actually moisture content right so let's say there's a lot of moisture content in the air so how's how's that gonna affect right, so let's say here's the air right so let's say this is just exaggerated that we have this moisture or water vapor in the air so how do how does that affect the uh, the performance of the animal right so there must be a range actually there is a range uh, for for each animal particular range for each animal where in, uh, it it's it's going to be optimum right but it affects much or it, it becomes significant or visibly when um, I mean at higher temperature right and if there's too much um, if there's too much uh, let's just this right, so if, if there is too much water vapor in in the air or let's say the moisture and for some systems animals production systems there's this bedding materials so let's say uh, uh, a rice straw or whatever bedding materials right so if there's too much moisture content then it can have this uh, it can produce uh, a wet that's right something like a wet bedding material so if if it's a wet bedding material then that means that it can it can promote uh, the production of uh, of molds, right? So if there's molds, then there's going to be pathogens. So it's not going to be beneficial to the animal, right? So that's the effect of the um, RH at higher temperature. That's um, it's going to be more visible 